Welcome to Bergen Catholic Crusader Basketball, powered by SSP Video. Bergen Catholic Basketball is brought to you by Trap Hagen CPAs and Wealth Advisors, Lee Free Home Improvements, Anderson and Wonka Consumer Clash Action Attorneys, Hoop Dreams with Billy Armstrong, The Guerra Family, The Breslin Family, The Cahill Family, and The Espinosa Family. Good evening, everyone, and welcome back here inside Hale Gymnasium on the campus of Bergen Catholic High School in Ordell, New Jersey, as this is going to be the second edition of a Bergen Catholic home basketball game this year. Bergen Catholic won their home opener last night in decisive fashion against Paramus Catholic, and now tonight they match up in a non-conference showdown against the Saddle River Day Rebels, who remain a perfect 5-0 to start the season, while Bergen Catholic ranked number five in New Jersey come in Five and three on the season. Hello, everyone. Again, this is a fun one. First ever meeting between these two sides. As Bergen Catholic locking horns with Saddle River Day. I'm Dan Long, joined alongside by my cameraman and producer, Jay Sticko. So glad that he could join us here for BC Crusader basketball action tonight on this Friday night in Ordell. Bergen Catholic, 88-56 win Last night against Paramus Catholic, they were decisive in taking that early lead in the game, pretty much because of the three-point shooting of freshman Chidi Wigwe, as well as the offensive rebounding and the domination on the glass, both offensive and defensive rebounds by Brandon Benjamin. Benjamin was unstoppable for the Crusaders. He went on his way to a first-half double-double, finished with 22 points on the game. And Bergen Catholic roll their way to their first league win of the season against Paramus Catholic. Now they have a stern test here today against a team that has fared quite well against non-public A teams so far this season. As Saddle River Day has victories against Union Catholic, DePaul Catholic, and Paramus Catholic on their resume. So they're going to be looking to add to their collection here today. And certainly this would be their biggest win of the season and potentially in program recent history as well if they can knock off the defending non-public A state champions of the Burton Catholic Crusaders. Saddle River Day comes in off a 58-33 victory at home against Creskill on January 4th and now they're going to be trying to take down BC here tonight. Crusaders again were led last night by Brandon Benjamin, 22 points. Cheney Wigway really Showed off his shooting touch in the first quarter last night. He had all 11 of his points in the first quarter alone, knocking down his first three-point attempts, first three three-point attempts of the game as Weekway was blistering from the outside. Van Trapeg and CPAs and Wealth Advisors have been longtime supporters of Burton Catholic Crusader basketball and are celebrating 50-plus years serving our community. Trap Hagen CPAs and Wealth Advisors provide a full range of comprehensive accounting, tax, and wealth management services. Visit www.tfgllc.com to learn how their advisors can help you and schedule a consultation today. Since 1997, Leaf Free Home Improvements has earned a reputation as a leading gutter, siding, window, and roofing contractor in Bergen County. They use only the highest quality materials and provide unsurpassed customer service and workmanship. Owned and founded by BC basketball alum Noel Naughton, Leaf Free Home Improvements dedicates themselves to exceeding the expectations of homeowners and commercial clients throughout Bergen and Rockland counties. For more info and for a free coat, quote, visit leaffree.com or call 201-730-6093. Burton Catholic Basketball would like to thank the Guerra family for their constant support of the Crusader basketball team. Anderson and Wonka is a boutique class action litigation law firm that practices consumer class action litigation in state and federal courts across the country. Founded by Brian Wonka, BC class of 1972, Anderson and Wonka represent co consumers nationwide and are proud supporters of BC basketball. For more info, visit Anderson Wonka, that's W-A-N-C-A dot com, or call 855-827-2329. And as we're getting set for our starting lineups, as well as the National Anthem, a reminder, fans, that Hoop Dreams will be hosting an upcoming basketball clinic on Martin Luther King Jr. Day, 
January 16th from 10 to 1 here at BC. For more info, visit hoopdreamswithaz.org or call 201-666-1769. So we'll get to the National Anthem as well as the starting lineups coming up momentarily here leading up to our second BC home game of the season, BC taking on Saddle River Day. So again, just moments away from the start of today's game as we'll have the starting lineups now for first for the Rebels of Saddle River Day. Number three, David Alexander. Number 10, Richie Machado. Jeremiah Ionsi, number 11. Evan O'Neill, number 14. And number 23, Parker Newenhouse. The starting lineups for Anthony Gallo, the head coach for Saddle River Day in his ninth season. Led Saddle River Day to 20 wins at the North Non-Public B semifinals a season ago. Now the starting lineup for the Bergen Catholic Crusaders. Number one, Austin Spencer, the 6'3 sophomore guard. Number five, Terry Copeland, the 6'9", junior forward. Number 10, Chidi Wigwe, the 6'7", freshman guard. Makai Clintman, number 13, the 6'0", senior guard. And number 20, Brandon Benjamin, the 6'8", junior forward. The starting lineup for Billy Armstrong, Burton Catholic coach in his 12th season at his alma mater, class of 1994, 216 wins for Coach Armstrong. He is an incredible 87 and 22 in his coaching career here at home at Hale Gymnasium. Burton Catholic 5 and 3 on the season, bouncing back after a win last night, 88 to 56 against Bramus Catholic. PC had the opening bucket, then Burton Catholic really never trailed for the remainder of the game on their way to the lopsided victory. Saddle River Day coming off a blowout victory of their own, 58-33 against Creskill on January 4th at home. Saddle River Day will be in their black road uniforms while Burton Catholic will be in their home uniforms with Crusaders written across the chest, numbers in red outlined in gold. BC 1-0 here at home this season. Saddle River Day 1-0 on the road. We'll see how Terry Copeland bounces back. Had only six points last night in the win against Paramus Catholic. 
The slack was picked up, though, by his teammates and by the BC bench. And the opening tap is won back by Bergen Catholic. The Crusaders will start out on offense here this evening with Klintzman running the point guard duties. Handing it off from Spencer. Now Weigwe for three in the corner. No good. Copeland fighting for the loose ball rebound and gets the offensive rebound. Here's Brandon Benjamin up top. Copeland now over to Austin Spencer. The sophomore struck for nine points yesterday. He takes another three. No good. So Burton Catholic 0 for 2 in their first offensive possession, both with shots behind the three-point arc. The C's part here for Saddle River Day. Kick out corner three ball. No good for the Rebels. Newenhouse now with the offensive rebound inside. He'll kick it back up top to Evan O'Neill, who missed on the first shot opportunity. Alexander. Lost possession. It's going to be last touch off of Bergen Catholic, so possession will stay on offense with the Rebels. 5-0 on the season. Bergen Catholic 5-3. Pass around the perimeter. Nice cut underneath and finding underneath a wide-open Parker Newenhouse. And Newenhouse gets the first two points of the game for either team. It's a 2-0 lead for Saddle River Day. Spencer on the far side, weak way up top. Copeland finding Spencer again, open for three, and once again missed it. BC has taken all three of their shot opportunities outside three-point lane, and that time Clintman had his shot deflected a bit there by Alexander. Saddle River Day pushing it in the open floor, O'Neill to the near side. Tipped away, but into the hands of O'Neill who saves possession for Saddle River Day. 2-0 lead for the visitors. Beating past the defense, right to the hoop is David Alexander. The 5'11 senior coming off a 7.9 assist performance against Creskill. Now have stretched the lead out to 4-0. Weigwe, catch and fire, no good. Tipped out of bounds, last touch off of Brandon Benjamin. That's going to be possession now for the Rebels. A little playful chatter going on between Jeremiah Yonsi and Brandon Benjamin. Ramis Catholic struggled mightily to keep number 20 off the glass yesterday. Again, a breakdown defensively. Coming over to disrupt the shot, though, was Benjamin. Here comes BC the other way on the two-on-one, and Bergen Catholic's on the board with a layup by Austin Spencer. 4-2 advantage now for Saddle River Day. Looked like Alexander thought that he was going to have an identical wide-open layup to the rim. Benjamin came over to disrupt it. Newenhouse across the lane, and he gets that floater to fall. Parker Newenhouse, who had 18 points and 7 rebounds in a win against Paramus Catholic as part of the 2022 Patterson Charter Holiday Tournament, a tournament that the Rebels won. On the lane, and that time, wild shot by Wigwe. Bergen Catholic forcing a little too much here in the early goings. Three minutes gone by, the Crusaders only with two points. Our dribble down the lane, drive and dish, and another layup inside. Yancey, the beneficiary of that dish from Richie Machado, and Saddle River Day has jumped out in front early, 8-2. A feed inside to Copeland, got it stripped away. An inspired start to this one for the Rebels. Pull up from three. Got it! David Alexander knocks down the triple. And a quick timeout taken by Billy Armstrong and Bergen Catholic as Saddle River Day has jumped out to an 11-2 start to this game with 4.29 remaining in quarter number one. Wow. David Alexander, five quick points for the Rebels. And Bergen Catholic's defense says... Have not been confrontational at all. They have been victimized for layup attempts, give and goes, and breakdowns underneath. And Billy Armstrong seeing his team kind of sleepwalking right now. They were dominant last night against Paramus Catholic. This is the first ever matchup against Saddle River Day. And in talking with Coach Armstrong after last night's game, he stated that this is going to be a tough matchup here. The Rebels, they're 5 0 for a reason. And also he knows that after his team has now won back-to-back -back state championships, they're going to have a target squarely on their back now whenever they match up against any opponent. 
And here's Clintman losing possession on the steal, and that's going to lead to a layup the other way for Machado. BC needs to wake up and wake up fast. They're behind 13-2. Copeland, nice gook. Good look on the weak side to the far side. Austin Spencer with another layup. He's got all four of BC's points. We're approaching the midway points of the first quarter, 13-4, Saddle River Day on top. A surprising start to this one here at Hale Gym. BC routinely gets back in games, though, with their full court pressure. Let's see if BC will ratchet up the pressure a bit. Machado and Saddle River Day, though, have had no problem in dribbling around the defense here so far. And Machado thought about it, ball faked. Pulls up from 15, no good. The tip is going to hit into the top of the backboard in the stanchion, and that's going to give possession back over to Bergen Catholic. Last season, Saddle River Day went 20-7 overall. Advanced to the North Non-Public B semifinals. They defeated St. Mary's in the opening round before being eliminated by Gil St. Bernard's. Spencer passing up top to Clintman. No look pass, Spencer, corner three. And Bergen Catholic is ice cold from downtown. They've taken about six different three-point attempts and have not knocked down one yet. Bergen Catholic going to their bench to try to provide a spark. Naeem Parrish and Tyler McQuaid coming in. Both a pair of sophomores for BC. 13-4 lead, Saddle River Day in the dark uniforms. 5-0 start to the season. Machado weaving his way down into the paint. On the far baseline, kick out to Alexander. Alexander weaving his way through, hook shot, no good. Machado tipping it, ball is loose on the deck. It's going to be last touch out of bounds off of Bergen Catholic. So possession will stay here with Saddle River Day. Three minutes exactly remaining in our first quarter, 13-4. The deficit facing Bergen Catholic. Pass all the way close to midcourt. McQuaid was trying to gamble there. Alexander freezing the defender. Missed it. Fouled his own miss with a tip up and in. The Rebels just water two steps quicker to the ball on every possession than BC. 15-4, the deficit for the red and gold. Here's Naeem Parrish. Over to Copeland. Nearly got it poked away. Copeland top of the key. Elbow jumper, no good. And Benjamin being kept off the glass. There's a collision right in front of Billy Armstrong, and that's going to be a reach-in foul against BC. That is the first foul of the game for either team with 2.25 left to go in the first. Who's going to provide that spark for a BC team that definitely looks like they're sleepwalking right now? That's a steal by Parrish right off the inbounds, and he swoops his way to the rim. 15-6, Saddle River Day on top. Devin O'Neill. With a cutter across the lane. What beautiful execution by Aiden Kina inside. The 6-2 senior off the bench got the two. A lob down low to Terry Copeland. Copeland with a hoop in the harm and a chance at a three-point play. As Copeland gets his first two points of the night with 158 remaining in the first quarter and a chance to make it a 17-9 disadvantage for BC. Crusaders 23-9 season a season ago, repeated as non-public A state champions. Won their third straight sectional title, claimed the 11th Bergen County Jamboree Championship in school history. Copeland rattled that one in and out. That foul on that last play was charged against Alexander, his first. Kicks out. Newenhouse, corner three. Airballed that one. Robinson tries to break it down the other way. He gets fouled at midcourt with a reach-in foul going against Evan O'Neill. But this is a Burton Catholic team that has a very young but very promising nucleus of talent. They're still trying to get themselves some varsity experience. Only the second home game of the season. It's a much bigger crowd than even last night 
for the Paramus Catholic game and a sizable contingent of fans that have made the trip from Saddle River Day. Not so much with Bergen Catholic. Here's Parrish, rotated into the corner for a three. So Naeem Parrish has provided that spark off the BC bench. He's quickly got five. 17 to 11. McQueen steals the pass, gives it off to Benjamin, and one! Now Bergen Catholic's woken up a bit. 17-13. The lead is trimmed down to four with Benjamin having an opportunity at the foul line for a three-point play. Third team foul against Saddle River Day as Kena picks up the foul. Benjamin missing on the foul shot, though. BC 0 for 2 from the line to start off tonight. Lead was as much as 11 points at one point for Saddle River Day. Alexander, nice move in the middle of the lane. Nine points for the senior. He had seven points all of last game against Creskill. 19-13. Robinson on the baseline, kick out. McQuaid open for three. Overshot the rim. Here's Benjamin on the offensive glass. Lost it in the lane. Hook shot. Hit the rim a couple times. Copeland playing volleyball with it inside and puts it up and in. Rebels breaking down the other way. Alexander stripped as he's going on his way up. Gets onto the stage. Now McQuaid with another steal. There's McQuaid. He's provided a spark off the bench. Another steal for number 11. The lead is down to two. 19-17. Rebels trying to keep the lead here, heading into the end of the quarter. Kick out, O'Neal, corner three, blocked by Robinson. Lob down the other way, Copeland behind the pack, two-hand flush by Terry Copeland. BC has come all the way back, and a frantic finish to the quarter. Their full-court pressure defense starting to turn over the Rebels, and after a double-digit deficit to start off this game, Bergen Catholic and Saddle River Day will be tied at 19 points apiece after the first quarter of action here at Hale Gymnasium. Fans help Bergen Catholic continue to build on their past successes by preparing for the future with a donation to the Crusader Fund. Crusader Fund gifts are unrestricted and immediately available where they are most urgently needed. Join us in strengthening the Bergen Catholic Brotherhood for generations to come with an annual gift to Bergen Catholic's Crusader Fund. Donate today at bergencatholic.org. SSP Video specializes in getting your student athletes to stand out from the competition and get noticed by college coaches. For more info and to sign up, visit sspvideo.org and get noticed. If you'd like to become a sponsor of these Bergen Catholic basketball broadcasts, please email bergencatholicbasketball at gmail.com. Dan Long, Jay Sticko, glad that he could join us here for our second broadcast of the 2022-23 regular season. Saddle River Day came out on fire. Took it to a sluggish Bergen Catholic team, but the BC bench has responded. Naeem Parrish and company have really guided the Crusaders back in this one. 19-19 ball game. Defense leading to offense at the end of that quarter for BC. Alexander has been the marked man here for the Rebels. Pulls up in the lane, and he hits it from 13. Give Alexander now 11 points in the game. First player for either team in double figures. Saddle River Day back in the lead. Bergen Catholic has never led in this one. They trail by two. Parrish up top. McQuaid, three ball. Tipped inside after the miss. Goes all the way out to space, and that's going to be secured by Jacob Carmona. Carmona into the game for the first time for Coach Gallo. Alexander with the mismatch and the isolation against Benjamin. Machado now being watched by Benjamin. Again, while Burton Catholic has the height advantage, Saddle River Day has used their speed to get around the defenders. Newen House over to the near side. Here's Alexander for three. Short. Taken away by Robinson. Here comes the junior, Jalen Robinson, in the open floor. Whirls his way to the rim. Coast to coast take there by number three for BC. Timeout on the floor for Saddle River Day. 
as this game is knotted up at 21 points apiece with 6.47 left to go in our second quarter of action. Ederson & Wonka is a boutique class action litigation law firm that practices consumer class action litigation in state and federal courts across the country. Founded by Brian Wonka, B.C. class of 1972, Anderson and Wonka represent consumers nationwide and are proud supporters of B.C. basketball. For more information, visit AndersonWonkaWANCA.com or call 855-827-2329. That's 855-827-2329. Twenty-one, twenty-one. the score. Terry Copeland with a game-high six points for Bergen Catholic. David Alexander, the magic man, with 11 points for Saddle River Day. BC bringing a little pressure there. Out of the timeout. Carmona dropping it off, and once again, Alexander leaked behind the BC defense. BC keeps on losing track of where number three in black is. He's got 13 of his team's 23. McQuaid, hard to the rim. He gets that rejected away into the corner. Newenhouse will collect after the Anasi block stopped McQuaid from once again tying it up. On the baseline, and that's going to be a traveling violation. Giving possession back over to BC with 6.14 left to go in our first half of play. Saddle River Day led early in the first quarter 15-4. Billy Armstrong had to take a timeout, talk things over with his Crusaders, bring his positive approach to the team, and then the team started to settle down a bit. It's the reason why the Rebels are a perfect 5-0 to start the season. They're no slouch. Taking down two of Burton Catholic's league rivals. Nice dish inside, and the one-hand finished by Monroe off the assist from Jalen Robinson. That's David Monroe, the 6'7 sophomore. But a good performance yesterday, eight points off the bench against Paramus Catholic. Machado across the lane, up top to Alexander. Alexander dishing inside, McQuaid got a piece of not only the ball, but also of the arm of the shooter. And Saddle River Day will have a man head to the line after the foul is charged against Tyler McQuaid. For Bergen Catholics, McQuaid, that's his first team second of the first half. Yancey to the line for two. Off on the first foul shot. Had nine points and ten rebounds in their last game against Creskill. Also chipped in eight points and four rebounds against Paramus Catholic. Second foul shot is also no good. Monroe tipped it, but right into the hands of Machado, but he also... Missed the layup. Missed opportunity there for Saddle River Day to once again give themselves the lead. Now Bergen Catholic in search of their first lead of the first half. McQuaid into the corner. Robinson for three. No good. BC has yet to knock down an open triple to begin this second quarter. They only had one three in the first quarter. That was from Naeem Parrish. Three-point shooting has been a problem for BC earlier on this season. Benjamin nearly had the interception. This time the interception comes the way of Jalen Robinson. Oh, a little too much mustard on that hot dog. And that time McQuaid cleans it up after that should have been a thunderous tomahawk jam. But missed dunk by Robinson. McQuaid there to save the day. BC's first lead. Full court pressure turns over Saddle River Day again. Robinson on the baseline looking for an outlet, but he throws it away underneath the rim. And a quick timeout taken by Coach Gallo after there was a turnover nearly happening on the floor for his Rebels side. So Bergen Catholic's full court pressure is starting to pay dividends, starting to get the ball and points in transition for BC. But Bergen Catholic still ice cold from outside. They have knocked down only one three-pointer so far in this game, and they've taken close to ten attempts already in this first half. Hoop Dreams with Billy Armstrong offers a variety of ways to help take your basketball skills to the next level. Programs include AAU teams, training, clinics, and camps to help you become the best basketball player you can be. 
Hoop Dreams will be hosting an upcoming clinic on Martin Luther King Jr. Day on January 16th from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. here at Bergen Catholic. For more information and to sign up, visit hoopdreamswithaz.org or call 201-666-1769. That's 201-666-1769. So the timeout by Coach Gallo saved possession for Saddle River Day. Now the Rebels will inbound it from their own baseline. Jacob Carmona bringing it up as McQuaid guards him. New one house up top. Here's Alexander splitting the defense. And there's an offensive foul drawn by McQuaid. Tyler McQuaid has been doing all the little things here since coming into this game. And that was an offensive foul against Alexander. And for Alexander, that is also his second personal foul. So the leading scorer in this game for both teams now picks up two. He'll stay in the game with 4-16 remaining in the first half. You'd have to think that BC is going to be trying to attack where number three is to try to maybe pick up a third personal foul in the first half. Here's Spencer over to McQuaid. Up top to Spencer. Austin Spencer with four points in the first quarter. To the foul line to Benjamin. Copeland is back in the game for BC. Spencer cutting inside. Nice drive and dish. Dumping it off inside for Brandon Benjamin. He's got four in the half. There's the full court pressure. And another turnover forced by the Crusaders. BC has won 80% of their all-time games here at home with Billy Armstrong as their head coach. They have had a tough go of it here in the first half, but have now taken their largest lead of the half, 27-23, with 3.45 remaining here before halftime. As I mentioned, this is the first ever meeting between these two schools. Saddle River Day competes in North Non-Public B, while Bergen Catholic is the three-time reigning sectional champs in North Nam Public A. BC taking a look at the Big North United Division standings. Don Bosco prep 2-0 in first place. They defeated in a blowout at home St. Joe's last night. Bergen Catholic in second, 1-0 divisional mark. St. Joe's 1-1 in league action. DePaul 0-1 and Paramus Catholic 0-2. It was tied at 19 after the first quarter. But at one point, Saddle River Day led early 15-4. Bergen Catholic has turned it on a bit after a slow start. Tipped down low to Copeland. Extra pass again. And just layup lines now here for Brandon Benjamin. Four quick points for number 20. He's got six. McQuaid intercepting the pass. He gets fouled from behind. And this Bergen Catholic defense, which has been their go-to, the full court pressure, that has gotten them back in a, several different games earlier on this season. It is showing off so far here in the second quarter of play. Fifteen foul against Saddle River Day as that foul went against Carmoda, his first. And number 21, Declan wooker Fanig is coming to the game for the first time. Copeland, nice, strong post move inside. He got the position and not many defenders are going to be able to deny him entry when he gets that possession. Another turnover on the full court pressure. Finger roll finished by McQuaid. Saddle River Day having trouble just getting past midcourt. Another turnover for BC. And another spinning move this time by Cheney Wigway. The freshman with his first two points of the night. Bergen Catholic is really cooking here defensively with their full court man-to-man -man pressure. Saddle River Day is having trouble getting it past midcourt. And BC's turnovers, forced turnovers, have led to easy layups. Now the Crusader lead swells to 12, 35 to 23. Three minutes left to go in the first half. Richie Machado, the senior, losing possession. And he got fouled on the play as it looked like it was going to be a breakout for another Bergen Catholic dunk. Third team foul against Bergen here in the first half. That foul will actually go against Wigwe. His first. Yeah. 
The Rebels have been shut down here in the second quarter. They have scored only four points after putting up 19 in the first quarter. McQuaid has been a revelation off the BC bench. Look at that defense, and that is a tough shot made by Carmona in the midst of dogged defensive work there by McQuaid. Weegway getting bottled up on the baseline, and a timeout granted to Billy Armstrong right at midcourt as the former Bergen Catholic standout point guard showing off his lateral quick uh, quickness still in getting into the ear of the officials. So a timeout on the floor. 2.29 left to go here in the second quarter of play. Bergen Catholic's lead is 10, 35 to 25 as Saddle River Day has only managed to produce six total points so far here in the second. Trap Hagen CPAs and Wealth Advisors have been longtime supporters of Bergen Catholic basketball and are celebrating 50 plus years serving our community. Trap Hagen CPAs and Wealth Advisors provide a full range of comprehensive accounting tax and wealth management services visit www.tfgllc that's tfgllc.com to learn how their advisors can help you and schedule a consultation today and Bergen Catholic basketball would like to thank and acknowledge the Guerra family for their constant support and dedication to Crusader basketball day is fault guys So a slow start for Bergen Catholic has changed its course completely. The BC full court pressure has been the difference in this one. BC is led by as many as 12. McWade looking to get the inbound in. Gets it up top to Weegway. Now here's Spencer. Give and go inside. Wooker Fanick was trying to drop it down low to Copeland. And is it going to be a foul whistled on the floor? It is against the Rebels. A pushing call. That will be the sixth team foul as the foul will be charged against Richie Machado, his first. Next foul would result in foul shots for BC the rest of the half. Hooker Fanig might have been bumped there, but no call. Copeland sets and fires from deep, no good. BC again, three points have not been their repertoire today. There was a whistle from the official at midcourt, as that will be a holding call. And it'll be a one and one upcoming for BC. So the foul was on the floor. That negated what was going to be a layup for BC. No, they're going to say that it was a foul against Bergen Catholic. So a foul on the floor, the ensuing rebound. That was charged against Bergen Catholic's Austin Spencer, his first, team's fourth. 2.08 left to go in the half. Up top, Carmona. Splits that pressure, hangs in the air, and nearly got it to fall. Good pressure, though, by BC, but McQuaid's pass is intercepted. Machado spinning around, looking for an opening. Newenhouse for three. Got it in, a broken play. Parker Newenhouse, the 6'9", senior, showing off the long-range touch. He's got seven in the half. Lead is down to seven, a 5-0 run here for Saddle River Day. McQuaid over to the near side of Spencer. Again, Naeem Parrish has been the only Crusader to knock down a three. BC is probably around one for 11 in the half. Give and go inside. McQuaid thought better of it, didn't have the angle. Copeland was trying to camp out inside. They're not getting it to him. Matched up by the fellow 6'9 player. Whirling Dervish of sorts inside. Spencer, frustration foul, reached in after the missed layup. That's going to be his second, team's fifth with 109 left to go in the first half. Parrish comes back onto the floor as well as Brandon Benjamin. 69 seconds left before halftime. Newenhouse outlets it down the floor. Newenhouse carving out space inside. Try to get it back up top, O'Neal from 15 feet. Passes up on the shot, gives it over to Machado. Under a minute now left to go in the quarter. In the air, Machado nearly threw it away. Carmona saves it. Carmona spinning inside, right into the chest of Copeland. He distorted the shot. Rebounded by Benjamin. Bergen on offense, under 40 seconds left to go in the second quarter. 
Weequay, that time, knocks down the three. He hit three three-pointers last night against Paramus Catholic. Chidi Wigway getting his first triple of the night. Here's the swarming pressure, and that's going to be a reach and foul against BC after a triple team came at the hands of Parker Newenhouse. Six-team foul against Bergen Catholic, so it's going to be foul shots the rest of the way for both teams. That foul was against Naeem Parrish for Parrish. That is his second personal. One of the best on-ball defenders for the Crusaders. Also one of the best members of the Bergen Catholic football team that won their second consecutive state championship. The C's part, there's a breakdown defensively, but Machado blew the layup. Missed opportunity there for the Rebels. Breaking it down the other way, Parrish tries the no-look. Tipped out of space, Machado, he got it off in time, but just hit it off the backboard. No good. So Bergen Catholic will take a 10-point lead with them into the halftime locker room. The Crusaders on top of Saddle River Day by a score of 38-28. to Stick around as we'll be back after this halftime break for the start of the second half as you're watching all the coverage of Bergen Catholic Crusader basketball here presented by SSP Video. to begin this game and it could be just human nature Bergen Catholic came off a blistering performance yesterday against Paramus Catholic they jumped out to a big first quarter lead never looked back taking on Saddle River Day a team they've never played before they had seen in the previous results that Saddle River Day had beaten Paramus Catholic by three so you're thinking all right maybe this is going to be another cakewalk but that was not the case David Alexander and Saddle River Day came out a-blazing. Alexander had 13 points in the first half, and Saddle River Day led at one point 15-4, but then Bergen Catholic woke up, started to play their vaunted full-court pressure defense, and that pressure defense led to countless number of turnovers that led to layups, got Bergen Catholic even with Saddle River Day 19-19 at the end of the first, and then Bergen Catholic outscored the Rebels 19-9 in the second quarter, to take this 10-point advantage at the break. Taking a look at the stats from the first half of play, first for Saddle River Day. David Alexander with 13 points. He scored nine of which in the first quarter alone. Parker Newenhouse with seven points. And then Aiden Kina, Jacob Carmona, Richie Machado, and Jeremiah Ionisi, each with two points apiece for Saddle River Day in that first half. For Bergen Catholic, Looking at their stats from the first half of play, eight points for Terry Copeland. He's the team's leading scorer. Brandon Benjamin had six points. Tyler McQuaid with six points off the bench for the Crusaders. Naeem Parrish also with five points off the bench. Austin Spencer with four. Jalen Robinson and David Monroe with two each. But it was Parrish and McQuaid, once they checked into the game, they provided that spark that Bergen Catholic was so desperately looking for. They brought that full court pressure that led to turnovers, led to layup opportunities. And Bergen Catholic has been frigid from behind the arc. They have knocked down only two three-pointers in the first half. Saddle River Day has knocked down two triples themselves, but Bergen Catholic has attempted easily 12 threes. It's just not been their night, and so far this season, that's kind of been a storyline. Bergen Catholic has not had consistent production from three-point range. They have the size advantage on most teams, Burton Catholic would be better suited once again, just established down low, and maybe that'll suck some defenders inside and lead to open looks from three, as Burton Catholic really did that same formula for success to begin the start of the second half. Kind of interesting, neither team electing to warm up before the start of the second half, each coming back after long stays in their locker room as we're about to get underway. The start of the second half here, at Chris Donfield Court at Hale Gymnasium. Dan Long, Jay Sticko, glad that he could join us for Bergen Catholic Crusader basketball. Fans, since 1997, Leaf Free Home Improvements has earned a reputation as a leading gutter, siding, window, and roofing contractor in Bergen County. 
They use only the highest quality materials and provide unsurpassed customer service and workmanship. Owned and founded by BC basketball alum Noel Naughton, Leap Free Home Improvements dedicates themselves to exceeding the expectations of homeowners and commercial clients throughout Bergen and Rockland counties. For more info or for a free quote, visit leaffree.com or call 201-730-6093. I'd like to thank the Guerra family for their constant support of the Bergen Catholic Crusader basketball program. We thank all of our proud sponsors for supporting the BC Hoopsters as well as making these streaming broadcasts a reality. Bergen Catholic will start with possession to start the second half of play. They are in their home whites. Saddle River Day defending in their road black. First ever meeting between these two schools. Weigwe will inbound it into the backcourt. Klinsman, who was scoreless in the first half. Weigwe hit his last three of the first half. Finally got that triple to fall. Spencer into the corner. Here's a corner. Long range shot for Klintman. Good box out underneath by O'Neill. And the Rebels will now be on offense for the first time in the second half. Trying to cut into a 10-point deficit. Scored 19 points in the first quarter, but were held to only nine total points in the second quarter by BC. Machado, refusing this, the pick there from Newenhouse. Now it gets to Newenhouse, seven points for the big man in the first half. Long, patient possession here on offense. For the Rebels. Right-hand dribble across the lane. Alexander a little wild, out of control. Drop off the other way for Copeland. Copeland again with the two-hand finish. Terry Copeland, first crusader in double figures. He's got 10. Chidi Wigwe forced the turnover for Alexander on the last possession. Alexander again trying to pop it inside. Newenhouse getting his hands in the passing lane was Copeland. Copeland got called for the travel, trying to pick it up and venture out of his defensive zone. So the possession will stay here with Saddle River Day. This ties the largest lead of the game for the Crusaders at 12, 40 to 28. Crusaders this season, fans, seven players are 6'6 or taller. Just incredible size for Bergen Catholic's team. And a very young team at that. Not a lot of upperclassmen. O'Neill looking to outlet it up top to Machado. Cross the lane. Up top now to Alexander. 13 points in the first half. What a nice shake and bake move. Just couldn't finish the shot as he was trying to knock down what would have been the third made three of the game for Saddle River Day. Here's Copeland trying to go high low. Bounce it into the kneecap of Benjamin. Comes out to Spencer. Copeland. Weigwe. Over to the near side. Off the dribble, and a nice dish underneath to Brandon Benjamin. Benjamin up to eight points himself. Machado, little out of control, but drew the contact on his way up, and that'll send Machado to the line, shooting a pair. First foul of the second half for either team, as we're just about two minutes gone by here in the third quarter. Clintman will pick up the personal foul, his first. as Machado will knock down the foul shot. Third point of the night for the 6'1 senior guard. Machado has that last attempt, rim in and out. He'll settle for the one point on that possession. Copeland's pass is stolen away by Alexander. Alexander will get it up the floor, and what a trail block, but oh, they're going to call a foul against Brandon Benjamin. Saddle River Day is trying to plead their case, so that should be a goaltending call. Looks like it was a clean block, but maybe Benjamin got a piece of the body as well from his trail position. So that'll send Saddle River, River Day back to the foul line, stopped in the clock with 5.51 remaining in the third. And their deficit 13. 
as that was the first personal foul against Brandon Benjamin. Ayansi with the foul shot. Three points in the game now for the senior. Missed on the foul shot. He's now one of four from the line of the game. 12-point lead for BC. Benjamin handing it off for Spencer. In the corner. Weigway in front of his own bench. Drains the three-pointer. GD Wigway up to eight points on the Knights. Second made three of the game for the outstanding freshman. Whirling Dervish inside, lost track of where he was. Outlet the other way to Copeland. Copeland rushed the layup attempt though that time. Spencer fouls it up. They're gonna say the foul occurred on the floor. Billy Armstrong is incredulous, hopping up and down, thinking that Spencer was in the act of shooting and should have been a chance at a three-point play. But simply a good foul by Saddle River Day on the floor, negating the bucket. And not even a chance at the foul line. Foul went against O'Neal, his second. Spencer comes off the curl, high arcing three, no good. Wigwe tried to get to the rebound, was boxed out nicely underneath by the Rebels. 15-point lead for the Crusaders of Bergen Catholic, who trailed early 11-point deficit in the first quarter. Alexander was forced to rush that shot. Newenhouse tried to follow it up inside. Ball pinballs out to Copeland. And Copeland breaks it out the other way for Bergen Catholic. Copeland stopping, throws it over. Wigway halfway down, in and out. Tipped out in space again. Spencer across the lane, up and under layup attempt, no good. Benjamin gets hacked on his way up. And Bergen Catholic starting to take over on the offensive glass. Numerous opportunities there for the Crusaders. And Benjamin will earn his trip to the foul line to shoot two with 437 left in our third quarter of play. Another foul against Evan O'Neill, and now O'Neill up to three fouls in the game. And Benjamin knocks down the first foul shot. Nine points on the night now for the 6'8 junior who averaged a double-double last season, leading Bergen Catholic to their state championship, their fifth in school history, second straight under Billy Armstrong. Tied for the program lead with most state titles, won by a head coach. Second foul shot, no good for Benjamin. He's one of three at the line. Largest lead of the game now for the Crusaders, 46-30. to 30. Four and a half minutes left to go in the third quarter. Carmona thought about the three. Spencer got his chest right in front. Wigwe extending the defense. Machado chucking that one up. Caroms out into the corner, corralled by Austin Spencer. Spencer into the near side baseline. Benjamin contorts the body and one. Benjamin's growth and development still on full display here. He took a huge step last season as a sophomore, continuing that potential growth here as a junior. Benjamin up to 11 points on the night now. He's been off from the foul line, though. That's his second straight miss. He's one of four from the charity stripe here tonight. 48-30, Burton Catholic at the midway point of the third quarter. Thanks for joining us here on YouTube, powered by SSP Video. Dan Long, Jay Sticko, honored to be with you here from Ordell. Newenhouse, post move by the 6'9", big man. He got fouled on his way up as Copeland was trying to time it for the block. And that'll send Parker Newenhouse to the line, shooting two, and stopping the clock with 347 remaining in the third quarter. Saddle River Day shares five common opponents with Bergen Catholic this season as Newenhouse toes the line. Missing on the first. The Rebels will be playing, or have played already, to Paul, Bramis Catholic, Dwight Englewood, Rutgers Prep, and St. Joe's Regional. Newenhouse missing on both. Benjamin with a rebound. Wigwe got blocked from behind as he tried to run down that far side flank. 48-30 as Newenhouse will come off the floor as well as Wigwe will get a breather 
as BC goes to their bench, the bench, the reserve unit that provided the spark they needed after the starters really didn't provide that much in the first quarter of play. Again, BC trailed by as many as 11 in the first quarter. They have fought their way back and now lead by 18. Clintman, Parrish in the corner. I Arker no good. Offensive rebound inside by Copeland, but he shuffled his feet. That's going to be a turnover inside. Copeland has been trying to do sometimes the power dribble, and that has led to a little more shuffling of the feet than inside. Saddle River Day struggling offensively, trying to get something going here. Only two points so far here in the second half. Alexander inside the lane. Ball back jumper doesn't fall. Here comes Benjamin out on the open floor. Benjamin showing the handle and getting the separation. Coast to coast for Brandon Benjamin. He's got 13 for the red and gold. Alexander with the no-look pass. Machado step back three, and that is much needed for the Rebel cause. Richie Machado is first made three of the night. Machado's got six. 50 to 33, Bergen Catholic on top by 17 with 2.44 left to go. And again, Bergen Catholic going to its bench, bringing on its reserves. It's going to be Parrish, Monroe, McQuaid, Robinson, and Benjamin staying on the floor for Billy Armstrong. McQuaid finding Robinson lurking on the baseline. Left-hand layup is good. Nice deception there by Jalen Robinson. And there's another quick putback by Naeem Parrish. Four points in the blink of an eye for the Crusaders, whose lead grows to 21. Largest spread of the night. Machado, high archer, doesn't hit rim. Nice looking shot there by Richie Machado. He's got eight. No one back the other way. One hand jam for Benjamin. And a timeout on the floor as Bergen Catholic taking full advantage there of that press break and having three different Crusaders leak down the other way. Benjamin is off to another big game. 15 points of the night for the Bergen Catholic Junior. 56-35 the BC lead with 2.10 remaining in our third quarter of play. Anderson and Wonka is a booty class action litigation law firm that practices consumer class action litigation in state and federal courts across the country. Founded by Brian Wonka, BC class of 1972, Anderson and Wonka represent consumers nationwide and are proud supporters of Bergen Catholic basketball. For more info, visit AndersonWonka.com or call 855-827-2329. Hoop Dreams with Billy Armstrong offers a variety of ways to help you take your basketball skills to the next level. Programs include AAU teams, training, clinics, and camps to help you become the best basketball player you can be. Hoop Dreams will be hosting an upcoming clinic on January 16th from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. here at BC. For more info to sign up, visit hoopdreamswithaz.org or call 201-666-1769. 56-35, Bergen Catholic leading Saddle River Day. Coming up on the final two minutes of the third quarter of action. Newenhouse to the rim, left it short. Rebound again by Benjamin. Snatched it out of the clutches of two would-be Rebels. Parrish, who has seven points of the night, passing to the corner to McQuaid. McQuaid passing it back up top. Here's Parrish, hanging in the air and hanging it off the far right side of the backboard. Naeem Parrish with nine points now for BC. 58-35, the lead grows with 90 seconds remaining here in the third quarter. An errant pass for Saddle River Day. That'll be a backcourt violation. And Bergen Catholic back in possession of the ball. Benjamin will take a much-deserved breather as he'll head to the bench. Wooker Fennick will come in for BC. 
As Parrish on the baseline, reversing it, far side corner for Robinson for three, no good. Tipped around underneath, Wooker Fanick, up and good! Declan Wooker Fanick, the 6'6 sophomore, coming off a nine point performance last night against Paramus Catholic. And there's another steal and a layup for Naeem Parrish. He's up to 11 points off the bench, and another timeout taken by Saddle River Day. Parrish, McQuaid, they've been the best thieves this evening for Bergen Catholic defensively. They've been turning over Saddle River Day at a high clip after the opening start of this game was all Rebels. Bergen Catholic, after being down by 11, I think they got the message loud and clear, took over and have not looked back. 62-35, BC's largest lead of the night. Saddle River Day will next be in action on January 9th as they'll travel to St. Mary's of Rutherford before then taking on Dwight Englewood on January 12th. For Bergen Catholic, their next game is going to be on Sunday. They're going to head over the bridge, go into the Empire State, and take on New York Power Archbishop Malloy from the Bronx as that is going to be a game on January 8th. Then BC will travel to Montville to take on St. Joe's Regional on the 10th before coming back here next Thursday against their arch rival, Don Bosco Prep, on January 12th, a game that you'll be able to see here live and on demand for free on YouTube. So spread the word to family and friends. Look up Bergen Catholic Don Bosco Prep on SSP Video's YouTube channel, and I'll be there to bring you all the sights and sounds if you can't be here in Ordell that night. Newman House up top for three. He's knocked down one triple in the game, tipped out. McQuaid over to his teammate, Parrish. Parrish, stop and pop, and gets it to fall with a mid-range jumper. 13 points now for the sophomore. One of the extraordinary athletes, student athletes here at Bergen Catholic. Number zero, as that's a foul administered by McQuaid as Alexander was going high to the rim. And talking about Naeem Parrish again, he led Bergen Catholic's football team with interceptions on the season, has a host of Division I full scholarship offers, and the likes of Penn State and, and others. Only a sophomore, so he could not even participate in like the fall basketball season. So he's rounding into form and basketball shape. Even had an injury and illness in the beginning stages of the preseason. And he is showing off how exceptionally talented he is as a basketball player as well. Alexander's first point of the second half. Goes one of two at the line. McQuaid skying higher than his 6'9 counterpart, but then he gets called for the travel. 6.9 seconds left to go in the quarter. 64-36 the lead now for BC. Saddle River Day with an attempt here to... Get a bucket just before the end of the third. Newenhouse up top, watched by Monroe. Stolen away by Parrish. Another interception here for Parrish, and he beats the buzzer as well. Naeem Parrish, 15 points off the BC bench. He has been electric for the Crusaders. It'll take a 30-point lead into the start of the fourth quarter of play here in Ordell. After three, Bergen Catholic leads Saddle River Day, 66-36. BC put up 28 points in that third quarter, outscoring the Rebels 28 to 8. As it looks like the Crusaders are on their way to their sixth win of the season, and this would be the first defeat of the year for Saddle River Day. But again, I've been impressed by how the Rebels came out in this one. They wanted all of this matchup. They played like it in the beginning. 15 points early on. David Alexander led the way, but then Bergen Catholic got the wake-up call they needed. Billy Armstrong, never yelling, never screaming, never out of control, having his team have a long talk and guided them to an ability just to bounce back after being down by 11 early. And Burton Catholic had a frantic finish, finished off with 
The first quarter being all knotted up at 19 all, and then Bergen Catholic has not looked back since. 66-36 advantage for the Young Crusaders. Looking for their second straight win here at home in as many nights. Alexander will knock down that long-range triple. Alexander with 17 points. He's a leading scorer in the game for Saddle River Day. Wooker Fanick off the dribble, looking for an outlet. Gets it to Monroe. Monroe gets it popped away from behind. Another turnover. And a reach-in foul there against Parrish as Machado was going in for the layup. 7.31 left to go in the fourth quarter. As the Bergen Catholic reserves on the floor here to begin the fourth quarter. O'Neill was getting his defender up in the air, just couldn't get the shot opportunity though. Alexander trying to cut by Monroe, has the mismatch with the speed advantage. Miss it, trying to bank it in high off the glass and good big bodied rebound there by the sophomore, David Monroe. As Robinson brings it down the other way. Robinson was passing it into the corner where he thought his teammate Parrish was still residing, but threw it out of bounds in the process. Sixty sixth season of Burton Catholic basketball, but this being the first meeting all time between these two schools that both reside in Bergen County. And a bobble exchange there. McQuaid going down the other way. What a move there! I thought he might have taken off a little too soon. But McQuaid showed off his athleticism, stayed up in the air, and then finished it off with the chance at an and one. Eight points now for Tyler McQuaid off the BC bench. He has shown a nice ability with a finger roll finish at the rim. Again, some more wholesale changes for the Crusaders as more subs come into the game. Rocco Gratali, who had a three-pointer last night against the Paladins. Uh, Bramis Catholic has come in. Julius Avent has also come in, as well as Nehemiah Snell as McQuaid finishes off the three-point play. He's got nine. Alexander shifting gears but missing the layup. Avent was trying to kick it out. Here's Snell dribbling it up. The host of defenders trying to get to him. As there's a whistle here, might be an injury timeout, maybe a little blood on one of the Saddle River Day players. That was Gus Kraft, number 13, who had to come out of the game for the time being. Again, it might be a case of that, of he just has to have a bandage put on him. Might be having a visible cut. 6.25 remaining in regulation. Have a little blood on the hardwood here at Chris Donfield Court as well, so have one of the officials attending to that business to make sure everything's squared away before we get back to the course of play with Burton Catholic with the inbounds. Again, 6.25 remaining here in the fourth quarter. After it was a tie score after the first eight minutes, been all BC since. Crusaders led 38-28 to at halftime and then outscored Saddle River Day by 20 in that third quarter alone. Avent, 6'6 six, six freshman. And Billy Armstrong has his entire program stocked with young talent. Here's McQuaid, a sophomore, rattled in and out from three. That's the only thing that hasn't been going Bergen Catholic's way here tonight, the three-point shot. Nice give and go. Alexander beat past his man. And the beneficiary of a great backdoor pass. He's got 19 in the game. Avent, spinning around his defender, kicking out. Here's Snell from 15, lets his defender fly by him, missed the elbow jumper. Saddle River Day still with 
Most of their starters on the floor right now. As that's nice layup there for the Rebels. Ayansi getting to the rim. He's got five in the game. 69-43. McWade. Nice job of going right at the rim. Not afraid of the shot blockers. And he weathered the contact, and that will reward him with a chance to head to the line for two. Tyler McQuaid having one of his best performances in his Bergen Catholic career. Again, he was on this team as a freshman a season ago. And McQuaid swishes home the first foul shot. He's got double figures now. He's up to ten. Bergen Catholic having to reload a bit after a couple of great seniors left the premises, including the program's all-time leading scorer, Will Richardson. He's now a standout at Fordham University. His teammate, Julian Brown, who was another 1,100-point career scorer for the Crusaders, he's at Wagner. So it's got to be the young Bucks now trying to lead the way for the Crusaders, and McQuaid putting in a great performance tonight here off the BC bench. He's an energizer, 11 points for number 11. Bergen Catholic's young side, they'll have their growing pains, but Billy Armstrong so confident in what his team will develop into by the end of the season. Booker Fennig with a rebound. Avents now outlets it down the floor. Natali getting it back up top. Across the lane, hooked into the corner. That's knocked out of bounds, last touch off of BC, right in front of the Crusader bench. Brandon Benjamin, another big night for BC, 15 points on the evening. Terry Copeland at 10. Naeem Parrish, 15 points off the bench for Bergen Catholic. He was unbelievable. Saddle River Day, not able to find any clean looks. Save ends, try the reverse layup, no good. And a reach-in foul against the Crusaders will stop the clock. That'll be the six-team foul as we're coming up on the midway point to the fourth quarter of play. Natale picks up the personal, his first, again, team six. Carmona. Dribble drive, nice dish underneath as Machado will get another layup. He's now up to double figures. He's got 10 in the game. And Burton Catholic will once again as that's a nice putback after the initial miss by Wooker Fennick. He's got four. Burton Catholic will once again venture outside the cozy confines of Hale Gym for their next two games. They'll be taking on New York City's Archbishop Malloy at a neutral site venue as that's a three ball knocked down by number 30, Shane Castles. They'll play Archbishop Malloy on Sunday as that is stripped out of bounds. Last touch off of Saddle River Day. And then their next league game will see them travel to St. Joe's Regional to take on the Green Knights in Montville on January 10th before coming back home here next Thursday night January 12th, 7 p.m. start time, Bergen versus Bosco, round number one here in this 2022-23 season. Don Bosco ranked number three overall in New Jersey by NJ.com and thought of as one of the top and most talented teams in New Jersey, led by Dylan Harper. Good block inside against Avent. But a steal produced by Bergen Catholic at midcourt. Crusaders getting it right back. Wooker Fanny going hard to the rim. He got fouled on his way up. As his momentum even took him onto the stage. Big cheeky smile from him. The sophomore big man is okay. And he'll earn his trip to the foul line. Stopping the clock with 2.36 left in the fourth quarter. Too strong on the first foul shot opportunity. Nine points last night against Paramus Catholic. Four points here tonight. 
against the Rebels for number 21, 6'6", sophomore forward. Goes one of two in that trip to the line. Five points on the evening for Declan. 74-48 lead for BC. Every Crusader has seen action. Every Crusader that's available to play. Booker Fanning got tripped up. And then eventually lead to the layup for Julius Avents. A.J. Williams, another outstanding, talented freshman, 6'7 freshman who's been out of the lineup. He's in street close. BC's hoping to get him back at some point. As that pass, a little too hot to handle for Saddle River Day. That goes out of bounds. So BC about to go to 2-0 here at home this season. Two big victories against Paramus Catholic and will hand Saddle River Day their first loss of the season. These Rebels are going to be a team that you're going to hear about for the remainder of this year. They've been across the lane, no good. Rebounded underneath inside by Burhan Kosar. As we come up on the final 90 seconds of the fourth quarter. Three ball, no good. Rebounded underneath by Sean Spencer, pushing it down the way. Avent rises and jams it home. Four points for Avent. 78-48 the other way. Lurking down to that other side was Castles. So Castles now has five points off the bench. As we approach the final minute of regulation, step back three. Oh, it falls there for Nehemiah Snell. The six-foot sophomore guard had a bucket last night. That time a little razzle-dazzle drew the oohs and ahs in front of his Crusader cohorts. The step back three falls for Snell, and it's an 81-50 advantage with now under a minute left to go here in the fourth quarter of play. So the Rebels were game early, led 15-4. Bergen Catholic came alive. Nice resilient effort inside there by Gus Kraft as Kraft will head to the line with a chance at a three-point play. Kraft had to check off the floor earlier in this quarter with some blood on his arm, and good to see him back in the fold. But yeah, Bergen Catholic trailed 15-4. to Billy Armstrong wasn't rattled at all, huddled up his team after taking a timeout, and whatever he said, here were the magic words. Bergen Catholic brought their full-court pressure. That got them back in the game, got them level at the end of the first quarter. And they have not looked back since, playing at a high level to finish off this game. Again, it's the growing pains involved of having an extremely young team. Most of this roster, freshmen and sophomores. But Birkin Catholic showing off that even though they have a youth movement, these youngsters are really talented. Naeem Parrish, 15 points on the night to go along with Brandon Benjamin's 15 points. They're the leading scorers for B.C., David Alexander with a fine performance, 19 points in a losing effort for Saddle River Day. And the final buzzer about to sound here at Hale Gymnasium as Bergen Catholic will be victorious by a final score of 81 to 53. Bergen Catholic will win their second consecutive game. They'll improve to six and three on the season. Saddle River Day will lose for the first time this season and will fall to five and one on the year. Again, the Rebels will next be in action on September on January 9th, excuse me, as they'll travel to take on St. Mary's Rutherford, while Bergen Catholic will be in action on Sunday as they'll take on Archbishop Malloy in New York in a neutral site showdown. So thank you everybody for tuning in to another edition of Bergen Catholic Crusader Basketball presented here by SSP Video. For Jay Sticko, I'm Dan Long saying so long from Ordell. We'll see you next week for Bergen versus Bosco.